In this video, we describe partial molar quantities. The main question that we're trying to answer in this video is when you have a mixture uh, of, say, two components, so that's a binary mixture, uh, how do you determine the overall thermodynamic variable uh, of a mixture? Okay, so uh, suppose that the thermodynamic variable we're interested in is the volume, right? So the question then would be, well, how do you define the total volume of the mixture uh, taking into consideration the volumes of each of the components. And this can be extended to any other thermo thermodynamic variable, like maybe molar Gibbs energy or, or enthalpy, right? So what is the total enthalpy of a mixture? Uh, how do you take the enthalpies of the components and then obtain from that one uh, uh, the total enthalpy of the, of the mixture? Well, uh, that's something that we're going to develop in this video. Uh, uh, for now, I have here some graph that, we'll, that I will recover at the end of the video. Uh, so pay no attention to this one just yet. Right, so let's take volume to illustrate the concept of partial molar quantities. Well, you can say if we have a binary mixture of only two components, say A and B, then the total volume of that mixture of A and B should simply be the volumes of A plus the volume of B. And, and that actually works just fine. That's, that's exactly how it works. However, there's much more nuance to that sum than you think. For one, uh, the way that we actually write that sum is as follows. Okay, so the total volume of that mixture is just going to be uh, the volume of A and the volume of B. But to calculate the volume of A and the volume of B, what we actually use is something that is called partial molar quantities which would be the contribution per mole uh, to the volume of each component multiplied by the number of moles of the component. Okay, so let's write that down and then say it again. Right, so uh, this will be the contribution per mole to the volume of component A multiplied by the number of moles of A plus the contribution per mole of component B multiplied by the number of moles of B. Okay, so notice that this is simply the volume of A, and this is simply the volume of B. And this, are, this is what we call the partial molar volumes of A and B. Okay, great. So again, uh, so far, uh, 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 no difficulties with this. This is just the volume of A, volume of B. The sum gives you the total volumes. Now, the nuance in this actually comes from these partial molar quantities. Okay, and, and, and a question is, well, how do we determine those? All right, so uh, I'm going to try to show you how this is determined. Okay, so the way that you would do, say, we're going to uh, try to determine the partial molar volume of A. The way that you would do this is as follows. You would have here initially some moles of B, so we're going to call this B, and that would be pure B, right? So you haven't added any A at all. And this has some volume, that's fine. Then what you actually do is you would add here some A, okay, some moles of A, and then you would simply see how the volume of the mixture, the total volume of the mixture increases upon the addition of A. And from that increase in the total volume, you would actually be able to determine the partial molar volume of A. Okay, let's actually try to see if we can monitor that with a graph. Right, so notice that this would be the total volume of the mixture, and this is simply the number of moles of A, that uh, you're adding, and the rest of the variables are frozen, right? So those are not changed. So you're not number, uh, you're not uh, changing the number of moles of B. This is whatever you had initially. That's not being changed, and you're not changing any of the other variables uh, that might play a role. For example, we know that volume depends on temperature, so the temperature is constant. Uh, volume also depends on pressure, so the pressure would be constant, right? So these variables are held fixed during this experiment. Okay, so, so here's what you expect to find, right? Uh, uh, the idea is that, well, the volume of uh, this, this mixture should increase monotonous, monotonously if you add A, right? So you would actually expect to find here a straight line that is always growing. But in reality, actually, that is not true. Okay, this, this line can have many shapes, but sometimes you're actually going to have shapes that might be like this. Okay, and this is, is something that I have to explain to you, to you very carefully because it's a, a little surprising. For example, let's take that point right here. Okay, so this is uh, how much the volume uh, changes 
um, uh, as, as you add some A. As a matter of fact, the partial molar volume of A at that particular amount of A is simply the first derivative of this volume with respect to the number of moles of A. So this is how much the volume is changing okay, for a given amount of moles of A added with all other variables being fixed, right? So number of moles of B hasn't changed, temperature hasn't changed, pressure hasn't changed. This would be the molar volume uh, of A at this particular point, at this particular uh, uh, number of moles of A with all others fixed. Okay, so uh, that's how you actually get this molar volume of A. Uh, uh, and notice that in this particular case, this uh, partial molar volume or the volume increases when you add A and say, well, that's, that's exac exactly what I expect, right? If I, have, if I add some volume to a mixture, I will expect the volume of the mixture to increase. Yes, that's fine, but notice that now we can go to maybe this point right here. And in that point, what you actually have is that the slope is negative. And again, remember that the slope here is how the volume, total volume of the mixture changes upon the addition of a few moles of A with all other variables uh, held fixed, right? So the number of moles of B doesn't change, T doesn't change, P doesn't change. Right? So that is the molar volume of A. But now this would be at a different uh, concentration of A. In this particular case, what happens is that you add A to the mixture, right, and the volume decreases as opposed to increases. And I'm going to try to explain to you how that is possible at all. But the take home message from this graph right here is that when you set up uh, a total thermodynamic variable for, for a mixture, as a function of the partial molar quantities of the component and uh, the number of moles of each component, you have to be very careful because these partial molar quantities depend on the concentration. So when you think about volume, uh, it's not the same to what 10 mils of, uh, say, water to pure ethanol than to what 10 mils of that water to a 50-50 mixture of ethanol and water. Right, so, so the volume will increase by different amounts, okay, depending on the concentration, and that is something that is quite, quite important here. All right, so let's then try to explain how sometimes you have, you can have increases in volume, sometimes you can have decreases in volume when you add uh, a component to a mixture by focusing on this uh, ethanol and water system. Okay, so this is where we uh, use this graph right here to try to explain that. What we have right here is the partial molar volumes of both ethanol and water, okay, as a function of the concentration. All right, so what we have here in the x-axis is the mole fraction. Okay, notice that this is uh, ethanol going from left to right, and this is water going from uh, right to left. Okay, so let's start here in this point. Uh, what we'll have here is that there is no ethanol present and that means that 100% is water. Okay, and then we can try to see how the molar volumes of, this, uh, of these components are. Okay, so the black line is the molar volume of water, and the red line is the molar volume of ethanol. Okay, so let's start here with no ethanol and pure water. All right, so uh, notice that the molar volume then uh, of water would be 18 uh, mils per mole. Okay, and that is the molar volume of water when pure. So this asterisk means when you're pure. Okay, and uh, let's go to the other extreme. Suppose that you have pure ethanol and no water, right? So when you have pure ethanol and no water, uh, the molar volume of ethanol is the molar volume of ethanol when pure, 18 milliliters per mole. All right, so let's now do a 50-50 mixture on a per mole basis, right? So a 50-50 mixture means that you would, be, you would be adding maybe one mole of water and one mole of ethanol. Right, so, so if everything behaved as you expected, then you would say, well, one mole of water is 18 milliliters, and one mole of ethanol is 58 milliliters. So if I mix them up, I should expect to find a total volume of 76 milliliters. Well, that answer is actually not correct, okay? What you have to do is see what are the exact values of these partial molar volumes at uh, the concentration that you're mixing, right? So you have a 50-50 mixture on a per mole basis, right? And what that means is when you add water 
the partial molar volume of water is not 18, as it is when you have it pure. Instead, it's actually much less. In this graph, it would turn out to be about 15 milliliters per mole. And for ethanol, what you have right here, right, uh, uh, the volume occupied by that ethanol in the mixture is not going to be 58. It's actually going to be less, maybe around 55 or so, maybe 56 milliliters per mole. Okay, so what actually happens is that effectively, when you mix ethanol and water, uh, you have a decrease in volume compared to the sum of the volumes when they're pure. And this can happen if ethanol and water are attracting each other very, very strongly. Right? Because if they attract each other very strongly, the molecules tend to be closer in space than they would otherwise be. And that leads to a, a, reduce, a reduced volume overall. Okay, so, so again, notice how important it is to figure out how these partial molar quantities change uh, when, when uh, upon uh, mixing, right, with the concentration. All right, I'm going to wrap up this video now, trying to uh, give you the two take-home messages for uh, the video, right? So the first one is that when you want to calculate the uh, a thermodynamic variable for a mixture, you simply have to add the contributions per mole of the components multiplied by the number of moles, and then you will be done. And this works for everything, right? So we can actually do the same thing for uh, the Gibbs energy, and this will be simply the molar Gibbs energy of component A multiplied by the number of moles of A plus the molar Gibbs energy of component B multiplied by the number of moles of B. Okay, so that's that's the first take home message. The second one, though, is that these partial molar quantities, those partial molar quantities, depend on whether you're actually uh, uh, having uh, separated pure components or whether, whether you have a 50 50 mixer or a 20 80, right? They depend on the concentration of components in the mixer. They are going to change. And that's actually going to be something that we're going to be focusing on uh, in the next few videos for these molar Gibbs energies, which we call chemical potentials.